Hi folks, welcome back to Residential Real Estate Mastery Blueprint, Session 6, Module 2. In this module, we're going to talk about how to win buyer leads through using a neighborhood market report campaign. The campaign is comprised of four emails and the purpose is to nurture your buyer leads and brand yourself as a local market expert. In email number one, you're going to introduce yourself again and provide the customized market report as a PDF attachment. Email number two is an opportunity for you to start telling a story and you can also provide them with some additional information and ask for them to provide you with a survey that allows you to pinpoint what neighborhoods they're specifically interested in and then you could curtail a report specifically for those market areas. In email number three, you're solidifying your top of mind awareness. And then in email number four, you, you can uh, keep in touch with the lead after a period of time and provide them with some additional uh, resources that they can use in making their buying decision. Let's take a look at email number one. In the subject line of your email, you want to write something like, the south side market report you requested is here and then you want to use the client's name in your in the body of your email in the salutation you could say dear mr stevens your custom neighborhood market report is attached as a pdf file it is a detailed snapshot of the current q3 august 2018 as well as the previous Q2 um, June so you can spot market trends. The data in the report comes from our local multiple listing service system and comprises all of the transactions and listings through all participating member brokerages. It's an accurate and up-to-date data resource to help you in understanding the local real estate market conditions that will influence negotiations between buyers and sellers. I have at my disposal many reports in much greater detail and I'll be happy to send them to you at your request. Just email me with the neighborhood you would like information on, even from previous quarters, and I'll generate a report for you at no charge. Thanks again for your request and enjoy crunching those numbers. If I can help in any other way, please reply to this email or call me at blah blah blah. Thanks, John Tanner, real estate agent. Now the reason why you would offer a comparison of Q3 and Q2, for instance, is so that they can see how the market is shifting, whether the prices are going up or down, and by what percentage. So after you've sent the neighborhood market report, you want to follow up with an email within three days. Email number two, the subject line will be the same neighborhood that you uh, specifically sent the report on. So let's with our example, we'll say the Southside Market Report Summary and Conclusions, and then your salutation, dear Mr. Stevens, and here's the body of this email. The neighborhood market report I sent you a few days ago was created specifically to give you a snapshot of the top track data items most buyers and sellers want to keep up with. The summary at the bottom is broad as well. However, there is a ton of more detailed information I can generate for you if I know which neighborhoods you're curious about. If you would take a short moment and complete our survey indicating the areas you're considering buying in, I'll send you another report with data more focused on your areas of interest. It won't take but a second. Just hit reply and type the neighborhood name and I will generate a ton of valuable data to help you make a more profitable decision. Now, you can create a survey using SurveyMonkey as I've taught in some of my prior seminars, um, or you can create one on WordPress using a, a, a survey uh, tool that is available for you, or you can print a manual survey and list the neighborhoods in your market area that they might be interested in. That'll help you curtail, uh, or curate rather, some specific neighborhood market reports that provide information about the schools, the school ratings, uh, walkability scores, and so forth. And one of the best resources that you can use to create that uh, market report is RPR. If you haven't used RPR yet, I highly recommend that you check it out. 
All right, that leads us to email number three. We've provided them with the neighborhood market report and we've given them some additional information. We've asked them to specify what neighborhoods they're interested in and now we want to offer them a comparative market analysis. And so the body of the text of this email is as follows. Subject line, you're on my list. Dear Mr. Stevens, no, it's not one of those bad lists. It's my quarterly market report mailing list. Whether we've corresponded since you received your Southside real estate market report or not, I will send you an updated report every three months. You won't have to ask for it again. Right now, if you're a now buyer, just window shopping or a homeowner wanting to see if and when it's a great time to list your home for sale, these reports are how you can track the market and spot trends. I'll help in that regard with commentary on each report about what I see in the way of interesting market developments. Of course, if you're ready to go look at homes to buy or you're getting on the serious side of selling, call, text, or email me so that we can get together. For buyers, I can get your search criteria and set up a custom new listing search for you or register you on my site to do your own searches and save them to view as often as you like. If you're thinking selling time may be coming up, let me get some information about your home so that I can create a customized comparative market analysis to suggest what price should work in the current market. This is always more accurate if I can visit your property to conduct a site inspection and get more details, but I can also send your report sight unseen via email if you prefer. Thanks for your interest in my services. I hope you find the quarterly reports of value. Now, if you're marketing using this to market to first time home buyers, you may want to edit this email and take out the parts about selling because they don't own a home yet. This is a first time home buyer. So I just wanted to preface that so that you can take that into consideration when you're creating your email automated sequence. Moving on to email number four. This, would, this email would be sent out in your sequence. Let's say you're using MailChimp and you've got your autoresponders set up to send these emails out. Um, email number one, uh, as soon as you get the lead. Email number two, three days later. Email number three, let's say that comes out a quarter later. And then email number four would be the following quarter later. So you wanna send out a market report every quarter, so four a year. So with this one, you might want to add um, some additional resources for them to use as a first-time home buyer. And I have a PDF packet, I think it's about 25 pages, that is included in my first-time home buyer seminar that's available on Udemy. And you can print that out or, or save it as a PDF and email that to your prospects. In fact, you can even include it on your website as a downloadable item. All right, so let's go to the body of email number four. The subject line reads, here's your new Southside real estate market report. Dear Mr. Stevens, because you've expressed an interest in local real estate market statistics reports, you're on my very special list for updated reports. Attached is the current report I've created from freshly gathered data extrapolated from the MLS. Regular reports like these are how appraisers, market analysts, and other real estate professionals monitor the market and watch for trends. Now you have the same information as we do, and you may spot something we haven't. If nothing else, you can interpret the current data as to how it influences your home buying or selling plans. I am here to help and providing these reports have proven to be valuable to my clients and potential customers. By sharing this data from the proprietary MLS system with you, I'm hoping that you will find it useful in your planning and research. These are comprehensive reports, but much more detail is available if you have specific information requirements. Just email me, call, or text, and I can generate neighborhood-specific data reports that will meet your information needs. Thanks again for your interest. John Tanner, real estate agent. So there you have it, folks. That is the four emails that you can use, or you can print them out and send them as hard copy letters with, uh, via direct mail to your potential home buyers. Now, 
I want to remind you of what we learned in session number five about using other people's listings to generate buyer leads. You can host an open house for someone else's listing, another realtor colleague of yours, and then generate buyer leads at that event. When they come in, they sign up for your emails in exchange for a raffle ticket and they get an opportunity to win a gift card that you're raffling off and you get the opportunity to gather their information then you can put them in your lead incubation system and hopefully be able to work with them in helping them find a home to purchase. All right, so that's a win-win scenario for your colleagues because they don't have to uh, manually sit at the open house or pay for whatever the setup is going to be for that event. You're going to absorb those costs, whether it be providing a bounce house or a DJ or food, whatever you're going to do in your open house campaign, you're going to spend a little bit of money, but it's an opportunity for you to advertise yourself in your temporary office for the day, the open house, and get those buyer leads. So that concludes module two, and this ends session six of how to win buyer leads. So let's recap what we covered in this session. We started off module one with talking about prospecting for first time home buyers by creating workshops or seminars at your local hotel or school or church. And by using Facebook advertising to get them into your seminar and then putting them through the process of getting pre-qualified from a lender and then helping them to not only zero in on their top 10 houses but then start visiting those properties and then try to narrow it down to your top three properties that they're interested in and start making offers and negotiating with the seller's agents. Then we talked in session two about using a free neighborhood market report campaign in order to incubate your buyer leads. If they're not ready to work with you immediately, this is an excellent program for you to nurture them and keep the top of mind awareness so that when they do make a decision to purchase that you hopefully will be their go-to realtor. And by providing those neighborhood market analyses and additional buyer resources, they might just feel indebted to you. So that's the objective here. And lastly, I threw in a recap of the open house strategy using other people's leads or listings rather to get those buyer leads. All right, folks, I always end my sessions with a quote, and this one comes from I think it's pronounced Koki Adasi. I'm not sure about the pronunciation on that name, but let's read the quote together. The host, the, sorry, the host, the house you looked at today and wanted to think about until tomorrow may be the same house someone else looked at yesterday and will buy today. In other words, don't sit on the fence too long. If you like a property, go out and get it. All right, that uh, concludes Residential Real Estate Mastery Blueprint Session 6. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed being here for you. Thank you for being a part of our community, and I look forward to seeing you in session number seven. Take care, and God bless.